Okay, here's another League of Legends game coming your way, this time with Shen in the top lane. And I should point out, I got into the game a little bit late, as you can see my team took off without me. But it's not a big deal. So, now I'm going to arrange his coin to match up. We have Yasuo mid against Anivia. Tom Kench partnered with Jinx Bot against Braum and Tristana. Lee Sin in the jungle against Amumu, and I am Shen Top against Riven. So the Shen-Riven matchup has already been posted on the channel once. This is your chance to see it again with different players, etc, etc. But the important thing is I'm still starting Cloth Armor 5 pots, because that way I can out-sustain her in lane and poke her down with my Vorpal Blade. Now, as for how Shen works. Passive is key strikes. Periodically your next attack will deal bonus damage, scaling off of your health, and it will also restore a small bit of energy. Q is Vorpal Blade. You target an enemy, throw your sword out at them, damaging them and marking them in the process. Every auto attack onto the marked enemy will heal the attacker, scaling off of Shen's health once again. The damage of the Vorpal Blade itself scales off of AP, and in the event you kill something with the Vorpal Blade, it will restore a flat amount of health, with no scaling whatsoever, sadly. Which was recently nerfed. Okay, next move is Feint. It's a shield, your W. It will mitigate some of the damage taken, as most shields do. It's not restricted to either physical or magical like the Black Shield is. And the other thing is, it scales off of AP. It's a bit of a trend with Shen. I don't think he has any AD ratios at all. And the other important thing is, every auto attack you make while your shield is up will reduce the cooldown in your passive by one second. So that's one of the reasons why I like to have Lay of the Rune King on him, by having more attack speed and get more attacks off while your shield is up and therefore more passive procs. Your E is Shadow Dash. It's a short-range linear skill shot of sorts. It's an escape type move, I guess, if you want to use it that way, but it gives you mobility. The way it works is Shen will dash into a target, preferably enemy champions. It does do damage ever so slightly, and it will CC the enemies that you hit. It will taunt them, force them to attack Shen. Now, this is not such a bad thing because you do have your shield to mitigate damage, but the way the Shadow Dash works itself is that it will also reduce the damage you take. It's flat damage reduction, kind of like Alistar's ultimate. Finally, your ult is Stand United. This is Shen's signature move. It's the thing that makes him such a nightmare to play against and will cause Tristana immense amounts of rage in this game. So the way it works is that it will, you target an ally with it, then you will put a shield on the ally for a few seconds. After about three of those seconds, you will teleport in, joining the fight. The move is global, there's no range limit on it whatsoever, otherwise that would be a massive, massive move to shed. Sadly, I do have to burn my flash here because I was anticipating that. And the thing that I wanted was to get him in range of tower, so he eats a tower shot, and then I could do a little bit of damage to force him back to base. Now, it was a good move on his part to come while I was level 2, because I didn't have Shadow Dash at the time. I took that right now in case he looped around. And I honestly don't know what Lee was trying to do with that Q. But... Yeah. So Riven started with a Duran shield because she, I guess she knew the Vorpal Blade harass that was going to be coming her way. Other than your Shadow Dash, everything of Shen's is single target, so it's a viable option. Especially if you know you're going to be at a bit of, bit of a disadvantage. Now, one thing I did not get the opportunity to explain is that... So right here I Shadow Dash her under the tower to force her to eat a tower shot. That pretty much wipes out a good portion of the health that she went back to get. You can see that she just came back in a lane and she's down, what, 30% health. Not good. But finishing up on the ult, it scales off of AP, so that's why I like to go with Vissel Scepter on Shen every once in a while. It does have a greater than 1 AP ratio, I don't know what it is exactly, but if you, for some reason or another, decide to build AP Shen, the shield gets really, really ridiculous. It's very easy to get a thousand point shield or greater. But for the most part here, my job is to serve as the team's tank, because 
Well, tank and technically AP carry because we don't have one. We have Yasuo and Lee. Now, the first item I build on Shen is almost exclusively Sunfire Cape. That will deal magic damage to supplement some of our AP issues. And it also synergizes with the Abyssal Scepter because since it deals magic damage, I mean, this is beauty. So by forcing her to attack me, all of the minions are zeroing in on her. And you can see that she is in really bad shape. There's just no way she can continue to trade with me as is. If I had Shadow Dash up, I could have killed her right then and there, but there'll be opportunities later, don't worry. So, Sunfire Cape deals magic damage, it's mitigated by MR. If I can go Abyssal Scepter, that will give me additional AP, but more importantly, a way to reduce the enemy's MR, and thus the cape becomes more and more effective. In the event you don't actually get a source of magic reduction, penetration, whatever you want to think of it as, the Sunfire Cape will peak mid-game, and even though it has late-game scaling, it's just a garbage item at that point. The only thing it really does for you then is help you push the lane, but it's... at that point your other items should hopefully help you with that. Generally with Shen, you are an amazing duelist. Bye, Riven. So right there I went in on her because I had the Vorpal Blade, the Shadow Dash, and my Key Strike up. It gives me a lot of burst that she wasn't quite anticipating. And right here is the chain turning point of the game. So, I end up saving Jinx. She has two kills so far, and I'm just hitting the mummy where I get the chance, I'm trying to weaken him, I throw the Vorpal Blade, and that's enough for her to get three kills. Now, the reason why this is the turning point in the game is Jinx is a hyper carry. She has amazing scaling. She got three kills early on, so that's 900 gold. And then she also got the EXP off of said kills, plus the minions that she hung around to pick up. So as a result, there's nothing Tristana can do for the rest of the game. And every time she gets close, I'm just going to warp in and ruin her day. So, yes, in case you're wondering, the game ender actually did occur at the 7 minute mark. But going back to what I was saying, Shen can actually deal a good amount of burst when the enemy doesn't expect it because... He has health scaling on his Q and his passive, so you can get a bit of damage that the enemy doesn't expect. But he's an amazing duelist, and it's a waste to actually build him full tank. Generally, you want at least one damage item, not counting the Abyssal Scepter, if that's the route you wish to go. And to put into context how good he is at dueling, if you look at Riven's health versus mine, she's in a really bad spot here. And it's only going to be getting worse for her. So right here I flashed because I didn't want to deal with her ult. But with her ult out of the way, I can start to really put the nails to her. So I have a couple options here. I can either just farm up under the tower or sustain with my Vorpal Blade, which is a very viable option on Shen. The other thing is I could just tell go back heal, teleport back in, since I have my teleport. Really, I have a bunch of options, and the thing is, she doesn't. And you can see, she went mid because she knows if she sticks around here, she's gonna die again. Now, the important thing is, I have Bammy Cinder, so I can push these passively. And as a result, I want to get these into the tower, not only to deny her, but also get damage down on the tower, because Shen is really, really good at split pushing. Press on. As for your single damage item, that's entirely up to you as to what it is. Here I'm going to sit in the brush hoping I could probably ambush her on the way back to lane, but... I don't know if there's a ward here already and she knew I was here. The important thing is she doesn't show up. And I just have to keep pushing these into the tower to deny her. She's going to fall gradually further and further behind. And as long as she doesn't get any kills, there isn't really a mechanism for her to get back into the game. So I have enough gold here to finish my Sunfire Cape, and I intend to go back to do so. I do have to wait a couple seconds, but it's definitely worth it. Worst come to worst, it'll allow Riven to push out from the tower, and then I can try to hit her. 
But as you can see, she did go all the way back to base. Our wills she kind of knew that going into lane with that much health was not a good idea. However, since she is pushing, I have to teleport in. Now, the Sunfire Cape does amplify the passive damage from the burn, so... I can push these much better, I can duel with her much better. If you notice, she isn't going for a Hex Shrink or anything, even though that's a really good item for Riven and Shen. Pretty much everything I do to her is magic damage, my Sunfire Cape is magic damage. And by getting that, she'll have the shield to basically make it so that I can't all in her like I did before. So you can see how the trades are even more skewed than they were before. Basically, the Dorhan shield is reaching its limit. And the Vorpal Blade has reached its peak with level 9. It can get a little bit better if I go Abyssal, but... For the most part, this is it at its best. So I'm just trying to poke her down with the Vorpal Blade, waiting for the opportunity to go in, while also denying as many minions as possible. Immediately. So, key things of note, I have all of my spells up. Most importantly, Stand United, so I can jump to the bot lane and further ruin Tristana's day. And you can see Riven went back, she has to teleport in, and she's just going to have a rough lane here. I'm not entirely sure if you'd consider Shen to be Riven's hardest counter, but you have the tools to make her extremely miserable. Basically, she has that shield to mitigate damage. You have a shield of your own, you have healing through your Q. She doesn't have as much until she gets her Ravenous Hydra. But the more important thing is you do have ranged harass with your Vorpal Blade. The key thing in this matchup is I try to harass with the Q and last hit with my autos. I am using the rune page I use for AD carries, I believe, just to give me that additional AD so I can last hit better. In terms of runes and mass, or in terms of masteries, I think I'm running 421.5. Since my job is primarily to tank, I'm going heavy in the defensive tree. And right here, Lee is going to commit suicide, I believe. So I could teleport in to try to save him, it's just, it's a waste of my ult. If you look at his health, down he goes. So right here I'm looking to see, do I need to save Jinx? Because, let's face it, Lee is not worth my ult, and he actually never will get to the point where he is throughout this game. But the important thing is, we do have late game scaling. In previous videos, I've always described Shen as a support top laner. He's not the type of guy you want to pick to carry to victory. He can split push, but he gives a lot more utility than pretty much any other top laner in the game. And yes, I am considering Lulu and Karma in that category. With honor. Missed the cannon, sadly. It's... At this point, the minions are powering up while I'm not because I don't have the right type of mastery page to cause my damage to continuously ramp up. Now, the one guy on the enemy team we actually kind of have to worry about is Nivea, since she's not doing that badly against Yasuo, while meanwhile, Riven and Tristana are getting crapped on. And if you didn't notice, this is a fairly brief game before I cross the halfway point. I think the next... Can't read what I said, but I'm usually more sarcastic in games where I'm not providing commentary to, so... It was probably something either sarcastic or rude. But the thing that I'm watching right now is the bot lane. So if you notice, Lee died. Once again, he's not worth my ult. It's pretty much exclusively for Jinx or Yasuo. And the way the game plays out, it pretty much is exclusively for Jinx. So, the stars aligned once again. Riven dies to the Sunfire Cave, ironically. But she dies, and I start proxying here to further deny her. At this point, I think I actually have double her CS. And right here, I'm watching the, lane, uh, the 
fight to see do I need to warp into save Yasuo. He actually is worth it, it's just he ends up not needing it. You can see that he has a lot of trouble killing Nivea through her passive. It's going to be that way until he gets a little, few more items. And while I'm trying to proxy here, I make the mistake of not being in range to get the local gold from the tower destruction. Kind of sucks, but the important thing is I'm still denying Riven and keeping her shut down. Now right here, Jinx is caught. Dead to rights. So, we stand united. I end up killing Trist. Jinx kills Braum. And this further snowballs the lead. They went all in. They burned everything they had on Jinx, and she lived. That's just highlights of the power disparity here, and it's only getting worse. Because once again, Jinx got EXP off of those, she got gold. And the enemy does not get EXP or gold. There's just no silver lining over Trist. It's just worse and worse. Especially since Riven is so far behind, she can't duel me. She has no way of putting up any sort of resistance to me. And it's just getting worse and worse. So this is a pretty big back for me. I don't remember if this is actually oh, going to be the last line. one since there's only eight minutes left in the game or not. So, but things of note, I got the Kindle gem for more health because, like I pointed out a few times already, the passive NQ scale off health. I got the Vamp Scepter for a little bit more AD and to boost my training potential even more. I got the Ninja Tabby because there's some AD in the team. And unfortunately right here I do not actually have my ult to save Jinx. So, shut down on her and Yasuo. But the main reason why I wanted the Ninja Tabby was primarily for dueling purposes. That way I can cut even further into Riven's damage because sooner or later she's going to get the Hydra. And then she will have some lifesteal. I'll have the Vamp Scepter help mitigate some of that, but... I need a bit of an edge still. Now, the reason why I want the Spirit Visage is for further boosting my healing. That's actually a health regen item, so I'll actually regen even while not doing anything. And... What was that other thing about it? I don't think anything of Riven's does magic damage, to be honest, but it will help against a Mumu, uh, Nivea, even Braum. And once the Spirit Visage is done, that means I'm pretty much free to go get the Dead Man's Plate. The reason why that's nice, armor, health, two stats that are awesome on Shen, but most importantly of all is the mobility, so even while my ult and teleport are down, I can still get to various places across the map. Um, the movement speed also turns into damage with the way the Dead Man's Plate works, so... Once again, it's going to give me a little bit of a boost to my potential. As for right here, I wanted to just take the big one to deny Shut Mumu. It's just... I don't have enough auto-attack damage without a Cutlass. And as a result, I end up killing all the small ones just with the Sunfire Cape. But the important thing is, there's still four minions here for me to collect. I can go ahead and get these, push this one into the tower, and just keep Riven on her heels. Just never let up on the pressure. And to be honest, I, well, you can kind of guess what's about to happen here. Jinx dead to rights, Tristana engages, Braum holds way too early, so I land my taunt, and I help myself to a double kill. And Tristana's upset that that's the third time I've done that to her. Three times when Jinx was pretty much dead to rights, one stand united later, and... Well, the gap has turned into a chasm effect. Sadly, right here I did miss my... taunt. But the important thing is, I did hit her with the Vorpal Blade, so I still get the assist. My Sunfire Cave still does some damage. And the Vorpal Blade marker actually allowed Yasuo and Jinx to heal off her somewhat. Sadly, I don't have a lot of health just yet for that to be a really big deal. But it's still something. Like in the meantime, we are going to kill an Nivea here if I remember. So I mark her with the Vorpal Blade, you can see Jinx heal up off of that. The chicken goes down. 
And at this point, I think we should probably back off, and I'm thinking, hey, it's open and Nivea's dead. This is probably the only opportunity we're going, going to get to siege this. So I come over here to help Yasuo as best I can. You can see he has the stack shiv, so if he actually did this properly, it'd be extremely difficult for me to actually get any last hits there. We can go ahead and push this in the tower, and you can see the goon squad has arrived to secure that. But that just means I'm going to head top. But... Okay, the red buff isn't up yet. I am going to steal the red buff once it comes up, just in case you're wondering. And now we actually have a somewhat impressive amount of minions here. There is no Definitely worth all the hassle of me coming this way. So if you look at the gold, I have a lot. And with three minutes left, I don't think I'm actually going back to base. So what I have is what I end with. But had I went back and spent the 2,000, it would have been even worse for the enemy. I think that's enough to actually sp finish the Spirit Visage. I don't know whether or not I'd have enough to get another Longsword to finish my Cutlass. Without a sound. But... I have to, like, I can continue pushing to force someone to come my way. The thing is, due to the way the shield works, it's very hard to kill Riven here. Basically, I need to push these into the tower to get her to react, and then try to damage the tower to take that down. And I intended to recall, but if you notice, Shadows. if you're looking at the minimap, you may have guessed what's up. So I originally wanted the red buff, but the thing is, you can see the fight breaking out, two go down. This time I'm holding on to Yasuo. Not really enough to save his life, but I get here just in time to take her. So I'm taking the tower for my team. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of armor just yet to really take this for a while. But you can see how annoying Shen can be, and why I definitely describe him as the ninja bodyguard. In that sense, he's a ninja to me. I don't know why Ryan just refuses to acknowledge that ninjas can be bodyguards. But now I can help myself to the red buff, about one minute remaining. And this is just really bad news for the enemy, because not only am I denying them a buff from either their jungler or their AD carry, but I can apply this to a specific target and potentially set up a kill for one of my teammates. So the minions are piling up here again. Sunfire Cape, Red Buff, Warple Blade, all these things come together to give me a lot of pushing power. And basically once this tower goes down, it's a lot harder to stop my split push. You could argue the fact that the bottom inhibitor being down justified, well, negates the need for a split push, but that's what Shen does, so gotta do what I gotta do. You can see that Amumu is reacting, but I've already successfully proxied, so... Yasuo shows up. I start attacking Amumu here while he goes and takes the tower. And yeah, the fight's... the game's over. They're gonna surrender in a moment. But you can see that they whiff everything. And there's the surrender vote. You can see that I went unkilled. I didn't want Yasuo to join the stupid because I didn't want to pick up a kill of the, our death at the very last minute. But Shen ranked unkilled. 